welcome, ladies. Welcome, welcome, ladies everywhere, women everywhere. Welcome to our SES live seminar on tonight. Women, I tell you, we have a treat for you tonight. Tonight, as we promised, we are bringing back part two. Two, do you know your circle? Ladies, it is so important in these days to know your circle, to know whom them that you spend your time with, to make sure that they are people that will make sure that they got your back. And when I say got your back, that when you are going through hard times, they are there for you. When you are down on your luck, they are there for you. And even when you are in your high places, that they are there for you. Not just there for you and behind the scenes, plotting against you. As we all know, this hot topic has been going around and it has been circulating throughout social media. And not only just social media, but it also has been circulating throughout the world about the young lady that went down to Mexico, Miss Robinson. And you all, we just want to make sure that every woman that's connected to us, that we get keys that we can apply to our lives so that we'll be able to stay alive and keep and have an abundant life, even with our circle, within our circle. So ladies, on tonight, we have part two of this seminar. And I know every woman out there that is connected to my voice tonight, I know you have come with great expectation with what you want to hear what God has given our leaders on tonight and the panelists on tonight concerning this situation, because it is so, it's so vital. It's just so vital that when we have a circle, that that circle understand loyalty, that that circle understands honesty and trust, and know that there's no room when I say there's no room, there's no room for jealousy. There's no room for envy. There's no room for thinking that, oh, because I have a little more than you, I think that I'm better than you. There's no room for that. So I tell you on tonight, ladies, that the panelists on tonight, they're going to come forth with information to help you, not only you, but if you have daughters, and, and this is not just something just for girls. This is also for your young men and your and for men because they have their circles too. And just like jealousy and envy arises among women, trust me, it arises among, among men too. So ladies, I tell you, each and every one of you, get your pen, get your paper out, get your laptops, whatever you use, your hand devices, so that you can take copious notes on tonight to make sure that you are able to know who your circle is. You'll be able to discern who is in your circle, being able to uh, make sure that those people that are in your circle, that they are for you because they know that you are for them. Last, um, last past two weeks when we were here in part one, the panelists gave us four nuggets to take with us so that we can apply to our lives. And those nuggets were one, discernment. When you can discern those people that are around you, you would know who's for you and who's not for you. Have a relationship. The only way you, with God, the only way you're going to be able to discern who's for you and who's not is that you have a relationship with God. And know this, number three, friends work together through their issues with effective communication. If you don't have effective communication, how are you going to know? that something that your friend did or you, that are you or even if your fan, friends feels a certain way about you if you don't have effective communication and four jealousy is real ladies know this and recognize it when you recognize and discern that someone is jealous of you for no reason. That was a perfect song that Sister Makisha put on today. He said the young man was saying just let me be great. He made me great. It ain't got nothing to do with me. He made me great. Just let me be great. But some people don't understand that your greatness and your gifts 
They are something that was already put down on in the inside of you by the maker. So their qualm should be with him and not you. So ladies, I tell you, I am excited tonight. And I hope that each and every one of you out there are excited. Women everywhere, we must understand that it is vital and it can be life-saving when you know your circle. At this time, ladies, I'm gonna read unto you all the unity prayer for sisters and powering sisters. Sisters and powering sisters, unity prayer. Father, we thank you as we gather at this appointed time and we praise your name that you have ordered our steps in one place together to draw strength from each other. Lord God, you are worthy to receive glory, honor and power for you created all things and you have adopted us as your daughters you have placed all of your divine skills in us and according to psalms 139 13 14 we are fearfully skillfully and wonderfully made by you now we ask that you give us a complete understanding of what you want to do in our lives in our homes as grandmothers mothers wives and sisters at our jobs, business endeavors, and our churches, and whatever roles we play in life. Thank you for this divine opportunity. We pray for sisters and women all over the world. Give us the wisdom and strength to become sisters and powering sisters through Christ. Amen. I tell you, ladies, if you listen to that prayer, that prayer sums up tonight what God has for us and the way that he would want us to interact with one another, especially in our close knit circles, because he letting us know that we're fearfully and we're skillfully made by him. So when we are fearfully and skillfully made by him, there's no need for any of us to have jealousy or envy toward each other. So on tonight, ladies, I just hope that each and every one of you have your pen and your paper ready to take notes so that you will be able to know who is in your circle. At this time, I'm gonna bring forth to the platform our Fort Lauderdale administrator, Sister Little. She will come with our mission statement. This is a sister that has demonstrated nothing but strength to stand no matter what. And why? Because she knows her circle. Sister Little. Hey, are you hi. Hey. How are you? You're I'm well. Good. How are you doing this I'm evening? I'm very, beautiful? very well. Thank you. I'm very well. And you look magnificent. And thank, thank you, you very as do much. You. And I want to get right back to you and what you're doing in our West Palm Beach um, office. And we thank you. And um, it's, it's um, you know, we have to be connected to the right yeah. circle. And I do, yeah. after going through the seminar and everything that's going on with not only you know, the young lady that we're talking about tonight, but I know it's happened in other places and with our young men, uh, we just have to stay connected to the right source as we were yes. saying earlier that will give us the the right circle so we got to yes. start with our source and mm. our source god yes and he will put the right people in our lives and again when we don't feel it if we not if we feel that jealousy as you were saying and envy and strife it's time to go no matter yes. what's going no on matter around what. us or, or what they have you know because we kind of connect to people because of what they have Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to make that exit right and make sure that mentally we're we're right and mm -hmm. physically we're right but i thank you um yeah. for everything and it's so great to see you i hope you had a great thanksgiving i did and did so did you i very i did very well yes. thank you blessing good. sisters thank you good evening everyone and i'm here with our sisters empowering sisters mission statement Sisters Empowering Sisters is an organization created to move women to another level spiritually, financially, emotionally, in their health and with their families. Our mission is to design a program and a support system for women to tap into their purpose and to help empower and motivate God's vision. The spirit of the Lord has ordained it for all sisters to jumpstart their purpose so that women can flow into complete peace, prosperity, and enter into God's destination for their lives. Everyone out there, women everywhere, and even everyone that's connected to a woman, God wants you to jumpstart 
your purpose. And as I transition, I would like to bring forth to the platform this phenomenal woman of God, this visionary, this woman who um, she takes on a lot, you all, but she wears it very, very well. And we thank God for her that she came in agreement with what God is doing with the purpose in her life and decided that she's going to walk with God and she's going to walk with him all the way. And she decided to bring about Sisters Empowering Sisters in every form and helping women everywhere to connect to their purpose and what God wants to do in their lives. And she's been doing a phenomenal job for the last 16 years. And that's just with Sisters Empowering Sisters, but aside from Sisters Empowering Sisters, she's walking it out with women just by having conversations. And, and if you have the opportunity to have a conversation with her, God bless you because you will be blessed. I would like to bring to the platform the phenomenal Dr. McNair to the platform this evening. Good evening. Oh, you look wonderful. How are you? <laughs> I am truly blessed. I am. Um, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm favored by God to yes. be here. And it feels so good. You know, remember when we used to have, when we used to breathe in and breathe out. Yes. Let's do that tonight, Jerry. Let's just take yes. that good breath together. Just, it feels so good. Thank God. Like and I thank weight. God for you. It's like a way it is. Yes. You know, and listen, women everywhere, if you out there with us, do it with us tonight. Just go ahead and take this time to breathe yes. in and breathe out. It feels like a weight just comes off you. Isn't that something? Listen, I'm so super excited tonight. Thank you so much. Um, listen, Sister Gerald, for that amazing intro, but right back to you. You are absolutely amazing yourself. We're so blessed to have you as the administrator of Sister and Pound Sisters. I am just overwhelmed with joy. I am to just be back on this platform with you. You know, we had so much of revelation and empowerment. I believe activation the last time we were on this platform and the Holy Spirit mentioned it before. Part two, I heard the spirit of the Lord say part two. Listen, I jumped right on it. In the next two weeks, we end. We're going to do a part two. Powerful seminar. Hats off to Dr. Watson, Sister Makisha. I'm telling you, we had such an awesome time on this platform, empowering women everywhere and just becoming aware. And that's what we want to do tonight. We want to bring forth awareness. And I know the last two weeks we met, you know, we talked about um, the Shenquilla Robinson story, and we didn't do a whole lot of talking about the story, let me say that, but what we did was we brought awareness. We didn't want to get too deep into the story, but what we wanted to do, we want to talk about the solution. We didn't want to get down too much with the problem, because we know that there is a problem out there, and we know that her story has brought a huge awareness around this entire world, really. I'm telling you, I have been in a such an awe on how our country, how our communities, how women, how families, how people have come together to not only honor her name, but to bring justice to her name. I'm telling you, I've just been at a wow. And let me tell you something. Who said our country don't have love and unity? It's there. It really is there. And I just want to stop right now before I go any further, because I believe without a doubt, it's because of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is present in this country and he's available. And if you don't believe it, Take a look around you. I'm telling you, God is really giving people a wake up call. And that's why before I go in further with you tonight, I want you to help me give God a big praise tonight. Come on, get those hand device out tonight. Give us some hearts, give us, give some, give it that thumbs up, you know, because at the end of the day, you're not really giving it to us. You're giving it to the Holy Spirit. So we just want to give God all the praise and honor to his name, because I'm telling you, through bad, through the unknown, through the good, through the unsure, through the difficult times, through the great times, God is present. Because according to Romans 8, 28, all things are working together for our good. So even in death, 
Let me tell y'all something. God has a plan, even in death. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, let me tell you something, women everywhere. If you just sit back and allow the Holy Spirit to deal with your spirit, you'll see God getting the glory out of this. Because I'm telling you, if you just pop on social media, I'm hearing, I'm hearing a buzz going around. I'm hearing a buzz going around. And I'm telling you, people are really honoring God, even in the most difficult situations, even in death, God is getting the glory. And I believe if this community continue to just stick together and this country just come together for the right of righteousness, I do believe that God is gonna get the honor at the end of the day. And that's what's happening right now. So without further ado, let me bring on my sister, my partner, my ride out, because I can't do it by myself. Listen, Dr. Watson, don't play with it. You know how we do it. Come on out here on this platform with me, girl. <laughs> oh. Hey, 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 hey. How are you, sis? Looking fabulous as always. You know, <laughs> I want to say sister, sister. Sister, sister, hello, hello. Hello, Absolutely. I was thinking about that today. When I, when I was thinking about you as I was at the war table today, I just kept hearing the Lord say, sister, sister. I said, yes. that's sister. <laughs> and, and I'm just so blessed and honored to have you on this platform with me. I am. It is just such an honor. And, and again, God has a plan. Yes, so Everything Amen. that you've been through, that entire mm. journey that mm -hmm. you had to go through. God yes. ended up bringing you right back to where you're supposed to be. That's right. Amen. So, to God be the glory. He always has a plan. Whatever the enemy has for our bad, if we allow him, God will always work it out for our good. And we have to understand that because God's plan supersedes the enemy's plan. Every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and back again on Sunday. Yes, he does. So all praises go to him, sis. I am so happy and elated to be on the platform with you. Such a powerful subject that we're going to be uh, talking about tonight. I love what you said before. We're not we're not giving too much to the story because, you know, it's alleged. You know, things that we don't know, we don't speak. Allegedly, this happened, that happened. But what we can do is bring awareness because it may be alleged as to who did what, but we do know that someone did something. We do know that someone is no longer breathing and they're no longer living in the land of the living. And they did go out of the country with their friends and they ended up not being able to come back. So the enemy had a plan, right? But we have to understand that God's plan, again, supersedes the enemy's plan. But we just have to walk in wisdom and we have to be aware of the traps that are set out for us. And if we're aware of the traps, we can walk around the traps. When we don't know that they're there, we're subject to fall into a manhole, put our foot into a bear trap or anything else that is out there. But we praise God, sis, and we thank God because he utilizes us. And it's not about us, it's about him to bring awareness to different things because he is concerned about his people. You are simply a vehicle that will allow people to go where God wants them to go. Simple as so thank God we're glad to be here tonight. Ready to yes. dive in. Absolutely, sister, because we do know that there's a huge problem. Yes. There's a huge problem. And in tonight focus, we want to deal with the solution. So tonight's seminar will be part two of are you aware of your circle? And I just want um, and ladies, I know you're out there with us tonight. So all the women that have the hand device, go ahead and hashtag that for us. Are you aware of your circle? Subtitle, do you know your circle? And I just believe Dr. Watson, even after our meeting on last two weeks and to, to, to really just um, move into the next two weeks, which is where we are now, right now, I believe it's gonna bring a huge revelation and a wake up call because I'm telling yes. you, I just believe without a shadow of, of a doubt, we have to begin to do things differently. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I believe that it is important that we realize that, that there is some serious um, 
uh, issues that are going on right now when it comes Absolutely. to understanding how important it is to identify your circle. Yes. And most of the time, Dr. Watson, that's something that we don't do for many reasons. I love what you said last week. We want to put purpose on it. And that's what we want to yes. do. We want to put yes. purpose on it tonight. Because like I said, even in death, listen to me, women of, women of faith, women of tenacity, women of power, there's purpose even in death. Absolutely. Is. And I believe once we come together like we're doing now, we yes. will see that there's purpose in yes. her death. And her death and dying would not uh, be in vain. In vain, absolutely. It would not be in vain. So it's unfortunate that it takes something, Dr. Watson, and women out there for something to happen, for things to change yes. better. So as we mentioned on last night, a last two week seminar, uh, we want to for everyone to understand that this story has really hit social media yes. and it's spoken huge volumes around this entire world. And I just believe that um, through the situation that we know that is going on right now, there's a lot of um, conversation that's happening about this story. But I noticed yes. after Watson and women out there, that's not a lot of solution going on. Mm. And, we, and we just want to dig a little bit into some a solution. solution. We want to yes. deal with how can we pre prevent this from happening. So as we bring awareness tonight, and that's what we want to do tonight, we want to take a quick snapshot mm -hmm. of quickly for all the people that's coming and saying, I just don't know a whole lot about what's going on. I didn't really see the last two weeks seminar. We'll take a quick snapshot, really. But before we do, I want to bring on Makisha, Sister Makisha. We want to bring her back on the platform tonight. Yes. Because we know that she is very much um, involved in the story. <laughs> because of her amazing background. I absolutely adore her. You know, to bring her on a platform like this, she is very, I like to say, uh, well-educated when it comes yes. to different um, situations um, and um, events that may happen like this around the world. And so, uh, Sister Makisha, how you doing, sweetheart? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> well, hey, listen, it's we're absolutely... Carol. We're yeah, absolutely beautiful listen. today. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yes. Listen, we're really excited. We want to dive into this a little bit tonight. And I know that um, you might want to show something quickly, a quick clip so that we can catch everyone up. A refreshing, uh, can, yes. Yes, yes, a quick refreshing. And then we'll just have a good conversation. And then we're going to bring it all to dip together and we're going to deal with some solutions tonight. Absolutely. Yes. The, the video is not playing right now. So I am having okay. a little technical yeah, dif difficulties on this end. So okay. Wanna, mm -hmm. Okay. So quickly, we're going to try to quickly talk about it a little bit. So we yeah, can sum it up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we know that this entire situation is about a young lady that went to um, a vacation with her friends. Um, it was six of six of her friends all together, and they had some type of confrontation um, when they were there. She was mm -hmm. attacked by one of the girls um, that. Miss Jackson that went with her on the trip. Now we do know that they video the attack, okay? Mm -hmm. And allegedly, okay, killed her, but we don't know the total facts, but we know for a fact that they lied about it. And they said that her death was caused by uh, alcohol poison. And we know that they, they lied to her mother about her death. And we know lying is not a felony, but we also know that when you lie, it suggests that it's a possibility that it was a reason why they lied. So mm -hmm. it, they look guilty at this point. And so tonight, we really want to have a good conversation about that and really deal a little bit on some ways that we can prevent these things from happening Yes. so that we can kind of get everyone in a loop of what's going on, Makisha. So go ahead on and, and, and share a little bit about your intake about what's happening. Okay, so the, the latest update, uh, there mm -hmm. was an arrest warrant that was issued uh, by the Mexi Mexico uh, authorities. And because it did not happen in the United States, of course, they are partnering uh, with the United States, which is federal, which is uh, the FBI. Um, so the FBI uh, apparently took one of the, the friends, uh, one of the, the uh, suspects into custody. And right now she is uh, just on a hold 
I guess, until they further um, get the information that they need, you know, from the Mexican government or authorities. So there is a process that, that has to be done as well. Um, but what we do know, you know, right now that on the, the legal side that they are, you know, working um, with, with the Mexican authorities and moving forward with this case. So that is a, a plus, a positive. And I think because of the uh, international attention, thank God for social media, it's not all bad, but, you know, when there's a purpose and something needs to be pushed out in the forefront, that is one thing that I can say that is a blessing to have social media. Everybody comes together and say, no, we need answers. Um, and it's not just the family, but it's it's the world. Um, it's it's those people that have those teenage daughters and those right. daughters that are in college who they they can relate to in in all colors, all nationalities, right. all religions, all of those people, all of us, we come together and say, no, we need to see something um happen with this story because we all can relate to having a daughter and we can relate that our, our daughter uh could possibly be in a situation where she chooses uh to hang around friends that are not good for her. So I think that that is the, the best thing that came out of this because we do know a lot of these stories. Um, you know, it's sad to say African-American women, these stories uh, get pushed under the, the, the rug, under the carpet. So I can say right now, uh, moving forward, that's a beautiful thing that we all have. We have social media at our disposal to push those issues forward and demand answers in an in a, in investigation as if this person was of a different race. Uh, so I think that's the positive thing. So I I foresee um, charges, you know, coming forward uh, for this particular friend that was seen on the video physically um, assaulting or, or battering uh, the victim. Mm -hmm. And you can clearly see that, um, you know, the FBI was able to get a um, a copy of the death death certificate. I mean, the um, the autopsy. Um, the autopsy. Thank you. They were able to get a copy of that and just review everything that they did on their end. So I do give credit to Mexico because they they are doing um, an amazing job with documenting um, and, and, you know, showing the United States that, no, we're not going to push this under the rug. We're going to do our due diligence in this matter. Um, we just need to partner with you all um, so we can move this investigation forward. And I do see both parts coming together and working with this, which is phenomenal, because, again, we know that uh, with Black women, there is underrepresentation when it comes to pushing those cases forward and, and getting convictions uh, for blatant uh, murders and things like that that happen within our community. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. And also, I also believe that, and I want to back it up a little bit, before we get to that point. Mm -hmm that preventing part we we want to prevent. I believe we have to teach tale talk um, to our to our children. And I'm yeah. not going to say just to our girls, to our boys as well, our young men and our young women. Right. Because I believe that the younger generation have to realize that we are living in revelation. We need to understand what revelation is. That's in the end time. We're living in the last days. And when we're living in the last days, we cannot do what we used to do. And we cannot do what I want to say, what we've seen or saw maybe our parents do, our aunts do, our family do, or even um, former friends um, in the an older generation, should I say it? Yeah. Because we have to understand that we have to be alert. You know, First Peter 5 and 8 talks about it, to be alert and mm -hmm. be sober-minded. And so, Makisha, you mentioned even the last time we met, you talked about, you know, the high rate with the, with the alcohol, drinking of the, the alcohol. And, you know, our younger generation have to realize they have to make better decisions when they go out clubbing, hanging yeah. out, because they cannot do that. They have to understand, and I love what you used to say this, they have to be their first line of defense. Yes. Stop looking for your friends to have your back. Mm -hmm. We're living in a time now where you have to have your own back. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are the conversation, right? Yes. That we have yes. to begin to have a conversation with our children to say, why do you put your lives in someone else's hand? Yes. No one should love you like you. 
Yes. So it's time for the younger generation to really wake up. And Dr. Yes. Watson, again, having young adults, I know you can relate to that. And I right. know a lot of women out there can relate to that. And they're saying, well, how do I get through to them? You know, we have to understand, we have to develop a relationship with our children. Absolutely. And that 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 takes us meeting them where they yeah. are. Yeah. And it's difficult for us to do this because we come with this hardcore, you know, uh, exterior and we have to understand we have to break that off so that we can connect to our children, especially our young adults. Yes. Because we have to be we, we willing, Dr. Watson, listen, to meet them there. I know you can relate to that. Right. You know, Absolutely. We have to, we have to mm -hmm. be able to do that for, for to break to break that so that we can create a proper relationship with them. We have to break the pride. We have to break that building. We have to break that wall, you know, because we're losing the relationship with our children. Yeah. And yeah, I believe absolutely. with wisdom, when we when we walk in a level of wisdom, I believe we can win their hearts. Dr. Yes, Mark. yeah. And, and it's the wisdom because, and, and as we said last time, because we have to understand that um, you can't parent a young adult the same way that you parent um, a teenager or an adolescent or someone like that. You, you're still a parent, but you have to parent adults differently. And there's an, there's an art to it because as you said, number one, communication. When you get on that level, there's a, there's a thing as respect and respect. We give respect, so we demand respect, but we demand it because we give it. And we have to talk to them as though they are adults, not like their children, because we have to understand if you want it to sink in, if you want them to receive what you're saying, first of all, you've got to make sure the approach is correct. And we, we cannot, it's no longer the, the, the do as I say, you know, or I'm the mother, or you have to do this. These are adults. These are people that are clear to making their own decisions, but these are also adults, but they're also children that God gave you until they go on to glory. He yeah. loans you to them because number one, they belong to God and he's loaning them to you to take good care of them. So we have to make sure that each level that our children grow on, that's the level that we have to respond to them on and we've got to be willing to shift gears just like yeah. driving a car you cannot go 50 and 60 miles an hour when you are in the first gear you can't do that you got to shift to fourth yeah. gear if you want to accelerate to that level it mm -hmm. takes you making shifts it makes you make it takes you making these changes and then you can have a smooth ride they will listen to you i love what dr mcnair said you, we, we want them to utilize wisdom. We want them to pay attention. And it's not the young kids. It's the older mm -hmm. ones. This young lady was 25 years old. Yeah. So pretty clearly she wasn't a child, right? But somewhere down the line, her trust levels were blurred. She yeah. was trusting the wrong people. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's because her parents didn't have the right conversation with her, but somewhere down the line, her her alertness was not where it should be for whatever yes. reason. We talked about this last week. Sometimes it could be because we have low self-esteem. It could mm -hmm. be because we want friends so bad we're willing to turn a blind eye. We're mm -hmm. willing to ignore the red flags. We're willing to still befriend that person that sits in your midst and talks about one of y'all other friends like a dog. Because listen, yes. any dog that can carry a bone, go take a bone. If they yes, talk about them good. like that, how do you think they really feel about you? Because last time you knew, y'all was all sitting in the same room together and they were buddy buddy with them too. So guess what? When they get in the room with that person and you're excluded, they're going to talk about you too. So we have to be wise enough. And Dr. Manny, I love what you said. And we That's have good. to bring awareness, even with our adult yeah. children. Yeah. Listen, I have a son that's 40 plus years old. And right now he is in the DR, right? He's filming and he's in the Dominican Republic. This is a 40 year old grown man that clearly can take care of himself. But when we had a conversation, I still said to him, listen, just beware of your surroundings. 
I know you're an adult woman. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but just yeah. remember, be aware of your surroundings while you are there. Stay in the right frame of mind while you are there. Yeah. You don't have any protection in the DR. That's not your country. My younger son and I were having a conversation a few weeks ago, and he brought it to my attention that when we go in these other countries, we're subject to their laws. We're subject to their rules. We don't have the protection of the United States of America. You might be an American, but you're not falling under the American laws and bylaws and rules and policy when you're there. You're fall falling under the rules and, and bylaws of that country. So you have no protection there. So I told him, watch your back, mm -hmm. be vigilant, be vigilant, make sure that you are aware, yes. be vigilant of your surroundings, make sure you stay in the right frame of mind, because guess what? You ain't home. Yes. So Dr. McNair, you're absolutely correct. And this is a 40 plus year old yes. male, not female. So, you know, the devil has no gender. The yes. devil has no age. The devil really doesn't care. All he cares about is stealing, killing, and destroying. Mm -hmm. And anything that's tied to you because of your purpose, the enemy is already after that seed. Well, Dr. Watson, I yeah. believe that as parents, what we have the tendency to do is focus on the fact that they're adults, but we don't focus on the fact that they're immature mm -hmm. adults. Yeah. And so when we have immature adults on our team, mm -hmm. we have to, regardless of their age, we have to take the time to do what you did. Mm -hmm. Have a conversation. A conversation. And there's, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. There's so many powerful things that you said, um, you and both Sister Makisha, and I just want to go ahead and just piggyback off it really quickly. Number one, what she did, and this is something that we need to bring awareness tonight, mm -hmm. stop dropping your guards with yes. your friends. She dropped her guards. And when I talked about First uh, Peter 5 and 8, it says be alert. But this is the key, be alert. Your enemy, the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand you're dealing with a spirit. Yeah. You have to Absolutely. remove your quote unquote friend. And, and, I, and I have a problem using that word as I have a conversation yeah. about Sha Shaquilla Robinson because yeah. um, they were not her friend. No, those but were associates. Those were people she Absolutely. knew. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I have a problem. So I'm going I'm to shift that in, in, as we have this conversation tonight and we empower the platform tonight what we um everyone out there tonight but what we want to do is remind you that the scripture says that it that, that your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring animal and, and specifically a lion seeking to and fro yes for the one to devour. that simply means okay. the one that has the, their guards down down yes that is key yes young people women everywhere Listen, tell your children, do not walk out that door with their guards down. They have to make sure that their guards, am I right about it? It's yes. constantly up. That means I'm alert. Yeah. So if you alert, scripture tells us you got to be careful what you put in your system yes. because you're no longer alert because yes. you're no longer sober. Yes, that's, that's good. You're, you're not in your right mind. That's right. So when you're not in your right mind, that you're open for the enemy. You're, you're yes. wide open. You're yeah. wide open for the enemy. Friend today, enemy tomorrow. Because that's how quick spirits begin to mm -hmm. um, transfer. Just that that's quick. It. And yeah. that's something that we have to really understand. And whenever you're open, that means you're available for the enemy. Um, Sister McKinney. Right. I, I actually have to just share a quick testimony because after we we did the meeting uh, two, uh, last week, the, two weeks ago, um, I had a conversation with someone and we were talking about the same topics um, about being around people, not knowing who's in your circle. Mm -hmm. But this, this individual, she was having a breakdown because she was feeling overwhelmed 
because she's constantly trying to help the people in her circle. And during the conversation, she ended up sharing this person that I had always seen her with. They were like best friends. Um, she ended up sharing and disclosing this information uh, with me that this person who she perceived to be her best friend for so long, like sisters, sort of say, um, she was was advised and shown some information that this person hated her. I wow. mean, was sending information out to individuals, taking pictures of her. It was just such a blow. It just knocked the, knocked the air out of her, but it showed her. And I was able to share those scriptures yeah. with her, as well as what we discussed on, on you know, the, the platform about you not knowing who's in your circle, you you being shown the flag and you ignoring those signs and those red flags. But God is so merciful, he'll still grant us the grace, he'll, he'll grant us the mercy to still get the information yes. to us. I mean, Shaquilla's time ran out. We don't yes. know how much she was granted. We don't know how many signs she did see. But I believe God shows us all signs because he wants us all saved, delivered, and to worship and, and, and uh, live to please him. So in her revealing all this to me, it was an eye opener. But more importantly, it showed her the favor and the grace that God still had mm. her life because wow. it could have easily ended differently yeah. had she not seen the snake yes. that was in her circle. Yes. So I think that, yeah, that it's just an eye opener in the way that God reveals these things to us. And many women on here tonight can think back to the red flags that God showed them with people right. they used to be connected to. We, yes. can, we all probably can connect to that in some way and ask ourselves, what made us make the choice to separate? Because with yeah. women, we're so emotionally attached right. to people. Correct. So what gave us the strength to say, oh, I can't do that because it has to be something in it, innate in us, deeply in us, yeah. that's strong enough to say, oh, I don't care <laughs> what you say. I can't yeah. be around you anymore. It, right. there, it comes to inner strength that, that you have and, and, and knowing who you are and who you're not that does the separation. So right. I, and, and Sister Makisha, yeah. a lot of times we can't do that, Dr. Watson, because we don't have wisdom in our circle. This mm -hmm. is the thing. Wisdom is not always taught. Sometimes wisdom is caught. Absolutely. So we have to understand in, in, and recognize the fact that you don't have wisdom in your circle. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to take a look at our circle and ask yes. yourself the question, do I have wisdom in my circle? Right. Because That's if I right. have wisdom in my circle, guess what? I can catch it. Yeah. And I can begin to understand and apply some of the things in our life. Dr. Watson, so important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I love what, um, what Sister Makisha said, because sometimes we, even, even if we have, and, and, and I get what you're saying about the wisdom, and we do have to have wisdom in our circle. But then she posed the question, what happens if we've got wisdom God shows us, but we don't have the self-esteem to, yeah. to accept what it is that God is showing us because, again, because we're broken. It, we go through so many things in life, especially with women. You know, we go through abuse. You know, we, we're broken. Um, we've been hurt so much that we're desperate for friends. We're desperate yeah. for the right attention. So we'll take anything. Remember, we used to hear the saying, a piece of man better than no man at all. A piece yeah. of friend is better than no friend at all. I beg to differ. No, a piece of anything is not good. If I don't have the whole thing, I don't want any part of it because what can I do with a piece of a friend? So it goes back as well to the healing. So it goes back to our relationship with God, our relationship with the Father that can heal all the brokenness, that can heal our broken heart, that can heal the wounds that we have from the world, from the hurt, from the pain, from the disappointment, the disillusion that we've had with people. And what happens is when we have been through all of these things, it shakes us at our core sometimes, and we no longer have that confidence. And as you said, Dr. McNair, then we become prey, P-R-E-Y, not P-R-A-Y. We become prey for the enemy. 
Because as you said, he's going, he's roaming to and fro, trying to see who he can devour. He's like a dog that smells fear. And he's going to go right straight for that person that has insecurities. He's going straight for that person that is fearful, straight for that person that doesn't know who they are or whose they are. And that's the one that he's going to try to attack. So we can utilize that wisdom, ladies, women everywhere. But if we don't have the strength, because God say, I showed it to you. You saw the red flag. So I know you're operating in that wisdom circle because you heard me, because you paused, because you questioned it, because you pondered it. So I know you heard it. If you didn't have any wisdom, it would have went right past you. You wouldn't have saw the red flag. You wouldn't have responded to it. But you you stopped for a moment and you said, mm, should I go? Mm, should I be there? Mm, should I? And then that insecurity came in and said, well, if you don't, ain't nobody going to like you. If you go with them, you're going to be popular. If you hang out with that crowd, they're going to like you. So you say, okay, I'm just going to go. Now you've ignored yeah. all of those flags. And as we said last week with this young lady, with Miss Robinson, we know that she funded, allegedly funded mm -hmm. a lot of the trip. She paid $6,000 for the Airbnb. So when you see people that are putting out this kind of money like that, I'm telling you, there's some insecurities in there somewhere. They're buying the friendship. They're yeah. paying people to hang around them because they don't have the self-esteem or they don't have the patience. Listen, Dr. McNair, and I know you agree. Sometimes you just got to hang out by yourself. Yes. <laughs> it, sometimes you just got to hang out by yourself it. and you yes. got to be all right with that. Sometimes it got to be you and Big Daddy and that's yes. it. And you got to be all right with that because sometimes God is trying to heal your insecurities. Sometimes God is trying to work on you and he wants to remove the distractions. He don't want you around everybody. It's toxic. He's trying to yes. save you. But if your insecurities and your weaknesses are forcing you to turn a blind eye, to ignore the red flags, to allow yourself to go into dangerous situations, to allow yourself to impair your judgment by drinking and doing the drugs and doing this stuff, when you are around other people and you have no safety net, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you're walking around and I'm going to go back to lost in space and you're yes. going to be like Will Robinson when that robot say danger, Will Robinson, danger, 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 because Will is just going around la, 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 and you're about to fall in a manhole Yes, yeah. because you are ignoring the flags, Absolutely. the warning signs, the yield signs. You done passed so many yield signs that God got a big old red stop sign and he just going to slap you in the head. That's what we're waiting for. It's uh, like yeah. we go past the yield signs and we figure, oh, God, give me a big old stop sign and stop me. No, yeah. God going to say, I gave you the signs. I'm not going to force it on you. Mm -hmm. What yeah. happened with the man that drowned? And it's a joke, but the man was out in the water. And he was drowning. And the people in the boat came by to save him. He said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm waiting on the Lord. And the people in the helicopter came to save him. He said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm waiting on the Lord. And the man ended up drowning. And when he went to heaven, he looked at God and said, no, big daddy, what's up? You said you was going to save me, man. I was waiting on you. God said, are you kidding me? I sent you a helicopter. I sent you a boat. I sent you all of these things that you ignored. Lord. So the question poses, Dr. McNair, do you know the voice of the Lord when 100%. you hear it? Do you know who is speaking to you, guiding you, giving you the wisdom and the strength, right, to fight against the wiles of the enemy during these tempting days and times that we find ourselves in? Those are the questions that we must ask ourselves, and we have to be strong enough to answer them honestly. Because when you don't, you're not fooling nobody but yourself. Mm -hmm. That's good. No one but yourself.
I think that's around the time and it put and it ties us right into Matthew's 26, 41. I want someone to hashtag that for me, very powerful. And we're going to tie in what Dr. Watson is saying and what we need to do. We have to watch and pray. Mm -hmm. Just, and, and, and Matthew 26, 41 says, watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. Yes. Whatever that temptation look like, and that's what you're talking about, Dr. Watson. How do we prevent this temptation? Yes. How do I not walk into this danger zone that you're talking about? You know, by watching and praying, and that's something we don't do. You know, there are several things that happen in the process of her leading to her death. Number one, she went on a vacation with people that she thought was her friends. Okay, mm -hmm. she's gonna break this down really quickly. Yes, thought was her friends. She went away to entirely different country. Okay. That's deep to me. That's a deep place. Okay. And somewhere down the line, if you're going out to another country with a group of people, you tell me you have to have some type of relationship with them. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So we assume that she had some type of relationship with them. And we also know through research, she went to college with a few of them. So there was yes. a relationship going on. We know that somewhere down the line, there were signs. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You didn't wake up one day and all of a sudden somebody got issues with you. No, mm -hmm. this is something that led up into that. Mm -hmm. Number yes. two, when she got there, she got into an altercation. Now, 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 now she, they, one of the, one of her associates beat her up. Okay. Now to me, you wide open. What do we say? Matthew 26, 41. We have to put the scripture, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Down. These are, listen, it's biblical. It may sound like that's just, that's just too mm -hmm. tight. That's not well, necessary, but no, it's necessary. It is We're very necessary. About saving lives. So yes. you need to tell your daughters, you need to tell your sons, you need to let your children know, you need to start opening up your eyes, watching your environment and praying. Yes. yes. So that you're able, thank you, Sister McKeisha, to listen, what did Dr. Watson say? Listen to the voice of the Lord when he mm -hmm. does speak to you. Because I'm telling you something, God is speaking all the time. He's speaking, He's yes. Speaking. So I have, to, I have to become open. The next one, one of her associates videoed her. Yes. While she was being beaten, mm. by the other associate. To me, we're looking at a situation that this young lady put herself in wide open. And when I process this and I think about it, I think about the fact that there was no discernment on her team, none. So when we have this conversation with our children, we have to do what we may feel uncomfortable doing. You got to start pulling out the word of God. I'm telling you, we have to start pulling out the word of God when it comes to our children. Yes. And it's something that it, one thing about our children, and, and I have to say this, they are familiar, they know, and they yes. are aware of yes. the word of God. They will listen That's to true. you. We have to come out of just having basic conversation and put the word on them. Yes. But how can That's we right. put the word of God on our children? We don't know the word. That's good. Yes. So we have to begin to open ourselves up so that we can read the word of God, learn the word of God and empower our children with the word of God. Yes. And, you know, one thing they can't do, they can't challenge the word of God. That's what I noticed with a lot of these young right. adults. Um, you can say whatever you need to say, and they can always challenge you because your mom, you know, your, dad, your aunt and they they know, you know, they know you. But one thing I have noticed is when you do what you um, are advising and you share the word, they're quiet, they're silenced because there is no comeback to the word. The word is the word and the word stands and there right. is no negotiating no challenge. when you, yeah, there's mm -hmm. no challenge. There's no way to challenge it. Um, so all they can do is no either, challenge. yeah, receive it <laughs> or choose to just walk away because I can't challenge God. Right. Word, you know, so and they that's may what not know right. the word of God because they don't know the word of God, but they fear God. Well, well, if they have a oh, parent yes. constantly you know what I mean? <laughs> preaching the word, yeah, they fear God, and when you and when they fear yeah. God and they become connected to that word, it yes. has the power to save yes. their lives. Yes, yes, yes. I'm telling absolutely. you, absolutely. 
And I, I also, Absolutely. Thought, I also, um, this, this story made me think of it from a different angle because we often have our, our young girls and, or young adult females and males, vice versa, that, that they make terrible decisions. Um, and it brings me back to the decision that this young lady made, the young lady who uh, apparently who, who was arrested for possibly taking her life. Mm -hmm. um, and when you think about that, that's another angle. Yes. Why are women you know, getting to the point, even if, you know, because we're not perfect, we get to the point where we make bad choices, bad situations. Um, and in those situations, in, in the split of a moment, we can end up taking someone's life and it happens a lot. It has happened right. a lot to women that do not do that do not know yes. how to handle different situations that they that you know may arise and the only way that they can handle it is through physical altercation. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. it takes me back um, to Genesis, the book of Genesis with Abel and Cain. Um, and, and of course the jealousy and all that that came up um, when God had the conversation with Cain and he told him, it's almost like he educated him, like what we're saying with the red flags. He educated him on, um, you know, sin crouching at the door. If you don't get rid of this anger, basically you have sin that's crouching at the door, just waiting for you. Mm -hmm. It's waiting for you to yeah. make the decision, which the decision that she made, she got in the fight, she, fight, she fought the girl and yes. she ended up killing her because of the rage, the anger. So we right. do have yeah. that aspect you know, to deal with as well, because that's a major issue when it comes to uh, our girls. They don't know how to properly handle conflict. And right. you know, the Bible tells us about self-control, you know, the fruit of the spirit. One of them is self-control. And we have our young mm -hmm. women going out with no self-control. So when they get right. angry, angry with someone, they put their hands on some, you know, on someone and they end up killing them because of the, the uncontrolled anger. And it takes me yeah, back to the story rage. that happened. Yeah, with the rage, with with uh, a set of twin, um, not twin girls, but they were in high school, like 10 and 11, 11th grade, and they end up fighting over a boy. But you had one girl come to the other girl's house to challenge her. And she was so mm. upset, she ended up getting a knife out of the car. She wants to challenge her at her home over a boy. Right. Well, the girl comes, just steps outside, and with the anger and rage, she takes the knife and she stabbed her one time. And that's all it took. Yeah. So yeah, in her killed. rage, it, yeah, it blind mm. it blinded her. But the girl ended up losing her life. But one story, one one thing that she said that stuck out to me, um, it stood out to me when she went to prison because she's in prison for life. This happened her okay. sophomore year, and they mm. interviewed wow. her in the prison, in a women's prison, and she said, out of everything she said, she said, if I only knew. If I only knew how to make a better decision at that time, if I only had known, she said, I would have yeah. never went over to her house. So yeah. It's all, yeah, it's all, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's the way yeah. we end up running into. If they don't lose right. their life, they get into a situation where their life is taken for the rest of their life. The right. Life no longer right. Longer. The enemy has an and assignment. And that's still the loss of a life. Yeah. What? The loss yeah, of and, a life. Yeah. And the enemy has an assignment. And when he's done with his assignment, his assignment, he flees. That's right. And that's really important that we realize that. And, yeah. and, and as we talk about that, that's so powerful that you mentioned that. Let's get into these nuggets that um, Sister Wanda talked about at the beginning in her opening. Yes. We're going to push it to seven. The Lord gave mm -hmm. us three more. So we're going to have seven nuggets. We're just going to review them quickly because um, it was so powerful last week. And these nuggets are going to really help you. And I, and I pray that you write them down, jot them down, share them with your, with your children, your young adults, share them with your children. It's so important that we understand that, you know, this information, information saves lives. Number one, yes. have a, have a discernment. That mm -hmm. is, that simply means, and, and it's simple. We're going to go through one through four quickly. If it don't feel right, it's not right. It's simple. Right. If it don't feel right. It's not right. And you right. Girls can jump in at any time. Number two, don't ignore um, the red flags. Yep. Don't, Ignore. Can someone hashtag that for us? Don't yep. ignore the red flags. That's that yes. discernment. And again, as the, as Ms. as Makisha, you just mentioned that I, I I want us to really understand that you know even in knowing what um the the, the information that the friend did, you know the anger, the rage. Mm -hmm. That's not the first time she displayed that. 
Right. When, when, you know, when Shaquilla went on that trip, that's not the first time she displayed anger. We have to start having discernment. Is this good for me? Mm-hmm. And stop, you know, thinking that, oh, no, it can't happen to me. Oh, yes, it can happen to you. Because, again, you could be mm-hmm. connected to death. Uh, number right. two, so powerful. Um, does your cir- circle have a relationship with God? I yes. didn't say if your circle went to church. I didn't. Th- none of that is important. Yes. Do they have a relationship, relationship with God? Relationship with God, yes. Very, very powerful that we understand that. Um, not only that, um, you know, do you have a relationship with God? Mm-hmm. So important that we have a relationship with God because when we have a relationship with God, that's number one. Yeah. Because we we'll have the discernment even when I when our circle don't have a relationship with God. Yes. We on point to know what's what's good for us and what's not good for us. That's right. Let somebody have a relationship with God, Lord Jesus. That's it. First key, <laughs> your whole circle. Come on, no one has a relationship <laughs> with God. Yeah, sitting up. You, you, yes. you I'm telling you, you you're going down Death Street. This is real talk. <laughs> this is real talk. You, you, you're setting yourself yeah. up for death. Right. That's right. And that's very powerful. Most people say, oh, it's not that serious. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, yeah, this, this, this is serious unto death. Yes. And we understand a circle that have a relationship with God. When you do, you will be, you will be living to willing to live in the word of God. I yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the word of God. You know mm-hmm. the word of God. Okay, a circle that prays together, God keeps together on one accord. Very powerful. They understand that. Number three, friends work it out, bad, good, or indifferent through, I love this, through communication yes. and constant revelation. That's right. Very powerful. I can't Very have powerful. revelation without having to have a relationship with God. Because That's right. Revelation simply means an insight. That's right. Insight. Absolutely. That insight will give you the wisdom. To, to know when to speak, when not to speak. Come on. Wisdom to know what's not good, what's not good for me. Very powerful that we understand that. So yes. we, we yes. must get that. Friends work yes. it out. And, and in that, in that friends work it out through that effective communication part. That's where friends have to know the difference between responding and reacting. What what Makisha, the, the story that Makisha told, the girl reacted to something. She didn't respond. What she was saying, and I'm paraphrasing, when they interviewed her is, I wish I would have responded to that and not reacted. Because we react through our emotions. And that's what the enemy is banking on. He wants you to react through your emotions. Why? Because he controls the emotions. That's his job. That's what he does. But when we respond, we respond through our psychic. We respond through our thinking. That's where God responds. That's where God drives us. And that's where God can utilize himself with us because it's a thought process. So effective communication, when you're communicating, friends work it out through communication. They don't work it out through fighting. Listen, I can have a disagreement with the friend, but we can talk it out. And at the end of it, we'll say, you know what? I don't agree with you. You don't agree with me. We're going to agree to disagree. I'm going to go my way. You're going to go your way. But we're not reacting. So we're calm. We're ha- we just having a conversation. I love it. I love it. And, that, and that's the part, oh, Dr. Watson, if I can add yes. really quickly, that's the part that they missed. They yes. missed the communication. They missed okay. the communication. Part. And a lot of time, unfortunately, these young people, they communicate through physical force. They yes. communicate through yes. using that physical force. Yes. And that's yes. not the way and, we and, and, and we're not talking about this, but just to throw this nugget in there, this generation too, they all carry. So it's not just about throwing hands anymore. It's about using weapons. They're quick to pull a trigger. And, and like you said, when the enemy's done using you, he gonna flee from you. He gonna leave you. He gonna go to somebody else. And what happens, the reason you feel remorse then and you didn't feel remorse when you did it is because he was the driver when you did it he was driving your emotion he was controlling you through your emotions by the time you leave you now you can sit now you feel convicted now you are remorseful because guess what it's you now the enemy has left you he has vacated the building maybe but he gonna leave you in that Mess. He's not the one that's locked up or he's not the one that's six feet under. 
So we have to understand that. And again, it's this generation. I love this generation, but this generation, they're, they're hot headed. They're, emo they, they, they're geared by their emotions. They're very passionate people and they don't want to listen because they, half of them, they are very intellectual. They're very smart. They're brilliant. That's why you got your gamers. That's why you got the ones, the techie ones that they are smart. Absolutely. But they are passionate and they are emotional. 100%. Emotional. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Um, and, and, and those emotions have to be tamed. Yes. Stop overlooking your children when they're overly emotional. That conversation piece, I have to always go back to that. Listen, women out there, have a conversation. I don't care how old your children are. You have to have a conversation with them. Right. You yes. have to constantly redirect and correct. It doesn't matter how old they are. Oh, they grown. No. And this is, this is, this is not about, you know, well, you know, I'm, it's difficult for me to parent a grown child. No, it shouldn't be difficult for you to have a no. relationship with your child. It That's should right. never be difficult for you to correct and redirect your child. It doesn't matter how old right. they are. My mom still recorrect and redirect me. Hello, somebody. Quick yes. and to the point. And I receive because her wisdom is always higher than mine. And so we have to get that to understand that. And, and parents end up thinking that they don't need a relationship with their children. Yes. That part is so yes. important. If they're going it is out, important. if they're going out traveling, stop, pray for them. That's right. Bring, bring it, bring the circle in. Let me pray for you all. But again, how can we do this mothers when we're not in a position because we don't know the word of God? Mm. Well, we got to wake right. some women up tonight. We have yeah. to. We have to yeah. know the word of God yeah. in order to impart. But what do we say? Yeah. Children, uh, when it comes to wisdom, sometimes it's not taught, it's caught. Yes. They're watching and they are going to, uh, they're going to do what they see their mama do. They're going to do what That's they right. see their daddy do. And what, what happens when the mom and dad have toxic friends around them? What That's happens when they sit and they see they you see the parents? They this. see the parents right with it's toxic a very relationships. It's conversation, Doctor Watson. Yes, really but it's agree. true though. It's, it's, a it's just true. that needs to happen. What happens? Yeah, we're just you see your mom always, you know, uh, you know, uh, to the place where she's never sober. Come on. That's right. Oh, she's cursing out people. At every turn, yes. right? Yes. She's yes. talking yes. about fighting. Yes. Listen, I, I, I know 50, 60 year old men and women that'll tell you, you'll keep your blood of the body of the body to cuss you out and do stuff just like the young people. So when they're watching that, listen, we are products of our environment. Here but at is. some point, somebody got to break the cycle. Yes. Somebody has to break the cycle. It can come from Big Mama and them and, and Mud Deal and come all the way down the line. But baby, baby, just because that's what you saw all your life, you don't have to be a product of that. You can break the cycle. If, if it wasn't taught to you, as Dr. McNair said, catch it from somebody else. It, it might not have been taught, but Absolutely. somebody's going to throw it out there. You are going to be, it can be at your friend's house. Your friend could have a praying mother. You might be involved with somebody that their family goes to church all the time. Or you might be involved with somebody that they have a mother that talks to them a lot. And you might be over there. You're privy to that conversation. And you're like, wow, that sounds really good. I never forget years ago when Amber was younger and we were coming back from Orlando and her friends was in the van and we was just having conversations but we were talking and we were saying things that these girls had not heard in their homes and they were salivating they were eating it up but they were desperate yeah. to learn they were desperate for that type of love and we was cutting we was being tough on some stuff with Amber but they were saying they it's tight they tough on you, but they love you. That's why they saying that. Wow, my mommy never said that to me. My mom has not. So we have to understand, you might catch it from somewhere else. Just because you don't get it from home doesn't mean you can't catch it out there. Absolutely. We just have to make sure and make sure that we are, again, goes back to God. It goes back to the work. We got to be lined up. Because when you're lined up, he's going to direct your path. He's going to send you. Where it is that you need well, to go. Dr. Wazza, this is the thing. What are you willing to sacrifice for your children? 
Mm. Come on, yeah. come on, women. We got to wake up. What what are we, we stepping on some toes tonight, but it's all right. What are we willing to sacrifice for our children? We can't play with the devil. See, some of us think that we can just play titter talk. We can't play with mm. the devil. We got to give up the ghost. Some yes. things we just got to give up. Why? Yeah. Because again, yeah. We want to make sure that we are creating a positive environment, even if it's our adult children. That's right. We have to create that environment. Why? Because it's time to save lives. That's and that's it. So yeah. I have to be willing to say, no, I re I, I no, I'm no longer going to do that. That's right. I'm making some changes oh. because it's not yes. about me. It's yes. about my family. Yes. Because I have to be that's able to impart. Again, Children do not receive from what you say. They mm -hmm. receive from what you do. I just want to save lives. That's it. Yes. And the first lives that you should want to save are the lives in your own home. Very important that we understand that. So, so we, need charity to begins that. Home. we want yes, our children to be sober minded. This is so important mm -hmm. because, again, Makisha, you talked about this on uh, the last two weeks, you know, the intake, all these things, mindset, they're, they're not able to have their own back because they're not even in a situation where they have a sober mind. Mm -hmm. They don't yes. even know how to have a good conversation, right? Or a mm -hmm. decent conversation or a normal conversation without feeling like I have to, I have to, I have to drink. I have to be drunk. I have to, I have to smoke weed. I have, why? Because listen, the environment, and we it have always, to make sure our children are in a proper environment. Go ahead, Makisha. And, and, it, and right. it always circles back around to the influence that uh, social media has. Oh, we, absolutely. We, we, yeah, we can't ignore that because to me, that's a huge influence in our children uh, today as well as the behavior. And again, we didn't have social media uh, back when, when a lot of us were younger. So we didn't have to deal with that beast of a system, right? And that's what I call it right. because- uh, if we all just think now, and we just think about the last year or two, or maybe three years, um, and I know everyone on, on here can contest to how girls reference girls and boys reference girls. They reference them as bro. So that is something mm -hmm. that has, right? That 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 is a negative connotation that has swept social media. And they all use this to reference. Like you have young kids, they don't reference their, their mother and their father with the respect that they were given and taught. They don't reference them as mom and dad, but it was a switch. It was a change in behavior. Right. They reference their parents as bros now. You hear the younger boys talking to the mom and saying, bro this, and bro, you know what I'm saying. And you have the girls talking to right. the mom saying, but bro, you ain't listening to me. So to me, those are behaviors and spirits that have passed from social media because social media has major influence on this generation. And if you think about it, Absolutely. a lot of our younger children are uh, attached to social media. And again, we're not just fighting those things that have nothing to do with that whole world, but we're fighting those spirits and those things that come against our kids and this generation that are, that are out to steal, kill, destroy 24 hours a day. And when do our children have right. access to social media? Yeah. 24 hours a day so yeah. that's something yeah. else that we have to take into account as well that there is a yeah. strong spirit of influence uh that negative influence it is us. and, and, and then, are, are then it goes back to the charity right. starts at home because yes go yeah because we we, we have to redirect them you know it, it goes right back to that yes you, you know there are influencers out there i mean that's their job title now that's why when you look on social media their job is their influencers that's mm -hmm. the big thing now and an influencer is just that it's an influencer they want to influence you to either purchase something or they want to influence you to click like click share click this but that's what it is they're influencing but charity starts at home i agree with you a lot of the slang and a lot of the stuff like that is so Anything that you do 21 times in a row becomes a habit, okay? Mm -hmm. And we know that. So with, with our younger generation being involved with social media and the influence of social media, and they're watching it more than 21 times, what's happening is, as you said, it, it's a spirit or, 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 or whatever it is, it, it, they're starting to do that. But we can redirect that, yeah. right? We can redirect it. And as parents, that's what we do. We show or we have to say, but what we got to do, if we allow it to happen, it's going to continue. But we have to redirect and say, well, now, no, I'm, I'm not your bro, or I'm not your this, I'm not your that, I'm your mom. 
And if you have done your due diligence in your home, that child will say, oh, they might do it one or two times, but eventually they're going to stop. Because again, you give respect, you demand respect. I demand respect. I I parent adult men. All three of my sons are, are adults. My youngest son is 34 now. Cameron is 34, or is he 35? 34, 35. He wanted those two. Anyway, 34. and then my oldest one, my thank you. And then my oldest one is 43. And then I have one in the middle, right? But I parent them as adults, but they still respect me because I demand that respect for them. And they have no problem giving it because I still give respect because they're adults. There's lines we ain't going to cross, but I still respect them as being adults. They got their own homes. They're doing their own thing. But when you cross this threshold and come face to face or we're on the phone, I'm mom. And that's the respect. You have a great relationship with them. But there's certain lines, no matter what has happened from social media, and I hear it. I've heard it. I've had the bro terminology said to me, you know, a couple of years ago. I was like, whoa, who that? First of all, I'm a female gender. And then I understood bro ain't got nothing to do with gender. It's just a slang, you know, they may call it an, an endearing term, but it, but it's not a respectful one. It's not a respectful one. And we have to show them that. And we have to use words like that. It's not respectful. Not to just say, hey, don't call me that. And even with our adult children, even, even with our adult friends, sometimes we got to give an explanation. Why? Because when you tell people why, they tend to do it more. But if you just say, don't call me that, or don't say that, they're going to keep saying it. Mm-hmm. Hey, don't, don't say that. That's disrespectful to me mm-hmm. as being your mother. And I don't like that. Yes. And sooner or later, it'll stop. So we have a bit of control, even with the influence that's out there. But what are we doing with that control in our home? Because as Dr. McNair said, that charity starts at home. And, and, I think this, and, I think, yeah. and I think this entire conversation is so good because, again, it ties in to Shanquilla Robinson because I think it's important that parents understand even when their children transition into young adults, we still have a part to play. Yeah. And I believe that we have power. You know, my son is 32 years old. He still listens to me. He will call me for advice before. And I like to say, and I'll tell anyone um, before he goes over the edge, he'll call me first. I'm the only one can get him off that edge. Talk him off that edge. Yeah, yeah and that's the power that all parents should have with their children. With their children. That they Absolutely. hear the mother's voice. That's they right. Know click, that click. They can go to the mother when they have a need. And, mm-hmm. and watch this. We need to be okay being in their business sometimes. Right. Who's your friends? So who are you hanging out with? You know, I still want to know. I don't care. Amber might be 21 years old, but I need to know your friends. You know, Wes might be 24. I need to know who you're hanging around with. Will might be 42. Who, 32, I need to know your friends. It's so important that we still mm-hmm. be okay with being in their business. Right. That's not a bad thing. Right. It's not a bad thing. I know this, that they asked a the mother that question, who does she go on a trip with? You yeah. know, we should know this information and it's okay for us to know this information. You know, yeah. and, and, and our children should feel comfortable going or coming to us and say, hey, mom, I'm going on a trip. I'm going with Sally. I'm going with Jim. That's I'm right. With mom. You know, yeah, because if things go left, and, I need you to know who I'm with. And they don't tell anybody the truth. They should be able to tell us the truth. I need you to know right. this is where I'm going. Well, why is that important? I need you to pray for me. I need you right. to know, you know, what's happening in my, in my life. But there are some uh, young adults, their parents are not even involved in their life anymore. Yes. That's not mm. good. We should always be involved some type of way. I didn't say be in their life, you know, right. or taking over or controlling. There's a difference. Yeah. But I want to be involved in your life. Right. I want to know your friends. I want to know who you're hanging around with. Listen, yeah. bring them at the house. It's so important that we know this information. Yeah. yeah. This well, information one of the reasons is because. Can help, can help them yeah. along the way. Right. And that's, and if that's they, really the point I really want to say yeah. this part, because we're talking about, you know, how can we help solve. We, we all hear right. about problem solving tonight. We know that there's a problem at hand, but how can we help 
bring some solutions. That's this right. Is the way we can help bring solutions, right? Because we want to save lives. Let me go to number four quickly. Jealousy. Jealousy is real. Everyone in your circle must have their own vision. If you have a circle and you're the only one with a vision and a plan, that's a problem. That's a problem because again, we talked about this last two weeks. Jealousy is real. Yeah. You're the smartest one on your team. You're the only one on your team that have a vision. Mm. What is your plan? Yes. Yeah, I have a business, but what are you doing? What, what's your next step in life? Mm -hmm. Do you have goals? So important that we understand. Absolutely. It. Because if you're the only one in your circle that's talking about your goals, talking about your dreams, come on, talking about yes. the vision that God has given you, talking about the, the mission, that's a problem because jealousy will always show his hand. So yeah. we have to make sure that when you have a circle, everyone have the same mindset. Yes. So if the success on you, success should be on your circle. If you're the only one to have a vision and plan, that's a problem. Dr. Watson, you want to add? Yes, anything? absolutely. No, no, jealousy is real. Very that's powerful. good. I can't, I can't say nothing about it. There's no yes. adding, no taking away to that. Jealousy can I say is this? You say this all the time, Dr. Watson, and I think it's important that we understand this because we always want to listen to what people say. We need to start listening to what people don't say. That's right. Have the, the people on your team, the people in your circle, your quote unquote friends, do they ever tell you, wow, I'm so happy for you? Mm -hmm. Do they ever say, wow, I'm so I'm so proud of you? Do yeah. they ever compliment you? Are they always questioning you? Why do you mm -hmm. have to do that? Why is it so important? See, these are so this is so important. We need to start listening because we yes. don't listen we need to listen to the silent noises because right. there are silent noises that you're not listening to and so important that we teach our children this when you have a circle what is your circle speaking you know and these are the things that we never we never think about i want you to process that for a moment the people in your circle when the last time they said wow i'm so mm. proud of you wow i'm so happy for you wow you're doing a great job you know, mm. these, are, these are things that, listen, we take for granted. We don't think it's important. We don't. It's not about what, they, you know, what they're saying. It's, what they, it's about what they don't what say. They're not saying. Absolutely. It's about what they're not saying. Because we're so in tune, Dr. Watson, on what they're saying. But we're not listening to what they're not saying. Everyone needs an empowerment. And if you're the only one in your circle, always constantly giving out, always empowering, always encouraging, that's a problem. Yes. So when you think about this, because you would become drained and mm -hmm. used and abused, mm. and that's that, and you you can't be effective when you're always no. being put on. So important that we Absolutely. understand that jealousy is real. Number five, be and I, and Dr. Watson, you said this. I want to go ahead and put this and add this into our nuggets <clears throat> that's going to help us and improve us when it comes to um, taking a look at our circle, number one, number five, behavior tells the story. Start mm -hmm. watching the behavior yes. of the friends. So That's important right. that we understand. Watch, and, and can someone go ahead and hashtag that for me? Watch yes. the behavior watch of the your behaviors. friends. That's right. Watch, and, you know, and, a lot, and listen, let's, let's be, can we be real for a moment? I like to have real moments. Watch the behavior of your mates. You know, our children want to have these girlfriend, boyfriends, these, you know, and, and these relationships. Watch the behavior of your mates. There's That's sometimes right. your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend may be jealous of you. You know, sometimes when people don't see themselves flourishing, That's jealousy true. is real. Yes. So watch That's the it. behavior That's right. of your That's right. friends. Behavior That's right. tells the story. Yes, it behavior does. Behavior tells the yep. story. Dr. Sometimes behavior can be as simple as body language. You know, what's the body language that you get when you walk in a room? You know, how do people look at you? You know, or watch the behavior. I like powerful. to watch Very powerful. my I like to watch the, the behavior of my friends or associates and sit back and watch their behavior with other friends or associates. I like to watch that. Mm -hmm. Because however you treat them, that's how you're gonna treat me. You know, yeah. watch behaviors. Behaviors tell a story, and it really does. Behaviors will tell you exactly who dwells among you. Are you gonna pay attention to it? Because their behaviors speak volumes and speaks very loudly if you have a friend that is angry all the time if you have one that's very emotional if they get set off by the smallest little thing and they snap like a twig watch that behavior Absolutely. because that same behavior that you're seeing one day 
that behavior is going to turn on you. It, it's, it's, it's evident because you are the one that's in the circle and you're spending all this time with that person. You think that sooner or later, that same behavior, you're not going to be faced with that behavior. So watch behaviors because they tell a story and they can paint a picture, right? But are you watching the picture? Are you listening to the story? That's the question. Listen to me. Women everywhere out there, listen, you have a daughter, you have a son, you have children. You need to have this conversation. We're giving us some powerful nuggets tonight. Have a conversation with your children and ask your children this question. Do you watch the behavior of your circle? Watch the be because this is this is a this is a conversation that needs to happen to you. You need to have sit down and have a conversation with your children. Share this yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. Give them a wow moment. Yes. Give, give them a different perspective of some things that they oh, never thought about. Listen, mm -hmm. if someone would have had a conversation with Shaquilla Robinson, listen, watch the behavior. Absolutely. It would have given her a different perspective. Wait a minute. Hold on, mom. You're right. Wait, wait a minute, auntie. You're right. You know, you know, these this conversation is very powerful and it can possibly save lives. So important. Watch the behavior. Number six. Um, and I love this, your confidence. Mm. You have to have confidence in who you are. Enemy smells insecurities. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you insecure, that means that you're always seeking for validation. Yeah. I need validation. So important. I need a friend on my team. And we want other, we must understand a insecure person is the biggest attraction for the enemy. Yes. Is when you're insecure. Yes. And so this is what I say to to parents. This is what I say to mothers. If you know that you're, especially your daughters, I want to deal with for a second. If you know that your daughters are insecure, you need to begin to work with them. You need to begin to, uh, you know, I like to say, not just have a conversation, but you need mm -hmm. to feel that relationship with That's them right. because there's a reason for the insecurity. Children yeah. are not insecure for no reason. There is a reason for insecurity and you need to pray, ask the Lord to give you a breakthrough Right. So that you can break yeah. into a relationship so that they can trust you and begin to be yeah. open with you and share on why they're so insecure. That's right. Don't be afraid to pull back the covers. Pull back the Absolutely. covers. Absolutely. Peel the layers back. It's not going to hurt. Might be uncomfortable at first, but trust me when I tell you, it'll be well worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. So powerful. Number seven, and I do believe this is the last one, very powerful. Uh, and we talked about this, but have your own back. Teach your children to have their own back. It is time out for our children to put their lives in someone else's hand. Okay. You're going out drinking. You've you now you 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 drunk too much. Now you 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 you're putting your lives in someone's hand. I have to make sure that Kathy gets me home on time. That's a problem. We need to start having these great conversations with our, with our, with our young adult children because they have yeah. to understand that no one can defend them like themselves. You are your first line of defense. Right. Absolutely. Um, can talking. I say this? When, you, um, when, you're, when you're drinking, everyone can't hold their alcohol. So watch the behaviors of your friends that drink and they go off the deep end when they do drink. Because a lot of times people can't, they cannot handle alcohol. Sometimes that alcohol makes them violent. The, 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 the marijuana makes them violent. It's not really the alcohol or the marijuana. They got an underlying issue. That's all it is. They got an underlying issue and that drink or that, or that, or that weed or whatever is giving them the confidence to say and do what they really want to say and do. So be careful with those people that drink and then they explode. Because again, sooner or later, that behavior might fall on you. We don't even know if that was a part of what happened in Mexico. We don't know. But we know that they, there was drinking allegedly going on and stuff like that. And who knows, somebody may not have been able to control themselves with alcohol. I don't know. 
we don't. But, well, Dr. Uh, Watson, uh, the video it. stated it's for a fact that they were drinking in the video. It showed that they were consuming a lot of alcohol mm -hmm. on the videos. It was showing on each one of the videos, um, mostly I'll say they were showing that they were consuming alcohol, you know, and again, when you, we never think about this. We, we, we have to begin to think like an adult. And I want to say a mature adult because we want to save lives. That's why we're here today. Because and it's something that you said, Dr. Watson, I want to say, and I want to hand it over to Keisha because I know um, mm -hmm. that she has experienced a lot of this in the, in, in the field that she has just come out of. But um, a lot of people can't handle alcohol. And, and and I have to say that because you hit it on the nose, they can't. You have some people that can handle it. Some people just can't handle alcohol at all. And that's when date rape happened. You know, Nikisha, you talked about that a lot. I know you've seen that, witnessed that a lot in the field that you came out of. We have to begin to make better decisions. Yes. And, 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 and this is just, and, and, and I want to say this, and it's not just the young adults, our children, even as adults. Yeah. Listen, we can't even put that on the children, even as adults. Y'all, come on, we got to wake up. We have to wake up. The Bible said, when you're a child, act like a child. But when you become an adult, away you childish. put away childish things. Mm. We cannot be out there doing the things mm. that we see our children do. Where is the influence coming from? Yeah. And, and, and uh, Sister Makisha, I'm going to hand it over to you. Yes. Very powerful. Yeah, just um, every everything that has been shared on the platform tonight is, is um, to just teach. I, you know, I always stand on if we can just receive more information and we can take that information and share it with someone else. Um, we're talking about awareness. So uh, my prayer tonight is that the individuals that were uh, able to come on tonight, they receive that and not only receive it for themselves, but they can take it and pass it on to those that they are connected to, because I do believe that when we are open and we have these conversation amongst the people who we are connected to, then it opens up a conversation for you to learn some things that they may be thinking um, that you can come and correct. So I think that opening up a, a line of communication and conversation about different issues and topics that we experience or things that are going on around us, give us the, the ability to educate others. If yes. there is a misconception about something, mm -hmm. there's, that's where the change can take place. Um, yes, 100%. Um, Jack, uh, um, Watson, very powerful. I wanna hear from you, but before I do, I wanna just go ahead and and um, and share this. Sister Jackie Clark said this, and, and I wanna say this because I believe that so many parents want a relationship with their children. She mm. said, Sister Janet Clark, ladies, you are right on point. This is what we need, a relationship with our children and communicate with them. Very powerful. I believe we want that. And and, and and I believe that, and, and I know it's probably gonna have a, another seminar because I believe that a lot of parents are suffering because it's challenging to meet our children where they are. It's challenging. Mm -hmm. It's challenging. And I believe it takes a lot of wisdom and letting go to do that. It really does. It takes a lot of wisdom. I didn't say preaching. I didn't say preaching. I said it takes mm -hmm. a lot of wisdom and communication, mm -hmm. but most importantly, um, wisdom to meet them where they are. Because when you meet yes. your children where you are, you have to do it blindly. You have to be able mm. to get, you have to be, is that powerful what Dr. Watson, you have to be yes. able to get yourself yes. out the way because yourself is going right. to want to uh, critique. Yep. Yourself is going to want to check. Yourself is yep. going to want to discipline. You're, these are the things that yep. we want to do as parents, but you have to be able to get yourself out of the way for a moment and I have to meet them where oh, they what? are and I have to utilize wisdom. Mm. And I have to do it yeah. blindly because an open yeah. eye and a natural eye is challenging for a parent to meet your child where they are. And you have yeah. to do that. And sometimes that simply means, you know what, Lord, I'm going to allow you to speak for me because what I want to mm. say, I'm going to mess it up. And we have to we really yeah. do that so that we can so that we can open up a dialect, a dialect, dialect with our children, be able to communicate with them. Dr. Watson. 
Yes, absolutely. I agree 100%. I mean, we said it so many times. It starts at home. Are we are we placing the blame on a parent for anything that, that happens? That's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is when we, we're talking about awareness, we're talking about how to save our young people from the wiles of the enemy that's sitting out there preying on them to make an error, to make a mistake, to be weak in certain areas. And it's about the awareness has to start from home. It's we're the front line. You know, a long time ago, God he gave this to me and he told me, he said, listen, it's like you the pastor and the children are the, are the, are the congregation. I gave them to you. They're the, you're the shepherd and they're the sheep. You know, you your job is to ensure that you are teaching them the ways of God. Now, when they get to be an adult, they're going to go their own way or what have you. But just like the prodigal son, when, what goes in between these two ears, trust me when I tell you, it stays in there. You might not see it right then, but whatever you're saying and doing, it's in there. It's in their memory bank, and they pull it out when they need to pull it out. But we want to have that relationship with our children. And you're right, Dr. McNair, some of us are afraid because we don't know how to have that. Well, just relax and have it. They're young adults. You have a relationship with them. You communicate with them. Open up the line of communication. Hey, how you doing today? How was your day? Anything happened today that you might want to talk about? Make it inviting. But see what happens, and I love what Dr. McNair said, we're not preaching, don't preach at them. You have got to give them an environment that they feel is non-judgmental. If you can give them a non-judgmental environment, they are going to be relaxed enough to talk to you, but you will be able to guide them. The Bible said none of us judge. So we can't judge anybody, even our children. But if it's judgmental, they're going to be defensive. They're not going to talk to you. What happens if that child wants to ask you a question and because they can't, they go out there and get in trouble? It's that type of communication. And that's all we're saying. Help them to be aware of their circle by letting the circle start with you. How about you be a part of their circle. You ain't got wow. to go with them out of town or somewhere, but be a part of their circle. Be in the middle of it. Because guess what? God is a part of our circle. He's right in the middle of it. That's very powerful. You know, I ugh, this seminar, I don't want to let go. It's so powerful. It really is. And Prayfully, if we have mothers out there watching, they begin to do things differently. You know, we want our children to grow. We, you know, we have to understand what we do have a bit influence on who they are today. And so we have to start thinking, you know, we have to stop dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, if we expect them not to drop it like it's hot, That's you know, right. if we're yes. dropping it like it's hot, you better believe they're going to be doing it. They're going to drop it like it's hot. So, yeah. And so we already know, as Sister Makisha said, as we close, social media does social media do. Social media don't need help. That is their biggest influencer in there that, 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 that our children have. But I believe that we can be even a bigger influence influencer in their life. I do believe that because at the end of the day, as Dr. Watson said, as I mentioned on the platform, charity starts not at social media, not at the home, not even at the church, but charity starts at home. And especially with these young mothers, they need to start having a different perspective about things. They need to realize that, guess what? They said, yes, and because they said yes to motherhood, they have to be willing. I wish someone can hashtag that out for me, willing to make a sacrifice. Mm. They don't want to give up their own happy life. They don't want to give up like Dr. Watson we mentioned last week. They don't want to, you know, stop giving up their turn up spirit. They want to turn mm. it up all the time. Yes. No, it's time to turn up Jesus. You know, yeah. because if the rep, if our rep, if our um children in this generation is like it is right now. You know what I say, Dr. Watson? And so, uh -huh. I don't know what's going to happen when my poor grandbabies get to be older. Mm, you know, wow. that, that that gives me a, you know, it fears. It, it's like yeah. a fear. 
Because Sorry. this happening right now, what's going to happen when our grandchildren, Dr. Watson, the little ones, when they become teenager, my God, you know, and I look at my children, my children right now that has to be parents one day. Listen, they have they have to understand they can't play with it. You yes. have to live by the word of God, stand on the word of God, empower the word of God if you want your children to live. And parents have to be willing to give things up. They got to give up the alcohol. They need to give up the weed. They need to give up that that the, that profanity and that mouth that they have. Why? Because we're living in the last days and we have the opportunity to help our children grow, nourish them so they can live a long, fruitful life or we have the power to mm. cut their life off short Nothing. because mm. of the decisions that we make. The Bible says that, you know, the um, sins of a parent fall down on the child. child. That's and right. so, listen, I'm saved today because of, <laughs> because of three children. Hello, somebody. That the Lord gave me and placed in my wounds. And listen, I birthed out. That's the reason why I call on the name of Jesus. I gave up the ghost. I gave up that world. Why? Because I want to make sure that I'm doing my part. Mothers, we got to wake yes, up. And we got that's to be, true. We have to be able to give some things up for our children. Time yeah. out for grandmama raising the children. Come on, somebody. You know, it's time for you to take a stand yeah. so that we can right. empower our children, give them what they need so that they can live a long, fruitful life. So they can have a discernment when it comes Beautiful. to their circle. Listen, Beautiful. this has been an amazing seminar. We went over tonight, but we always <laughs> say a good game going over time. Listen, yes. a good seminar go in overtime. So two overtimes. Come tonight, on. We did two overtimes. So we thank <laughs> you tonight that you stood in and hanged in with Amen. us. Amen. Come on in there with us. And I believe simply because you know that it's so important that we begin to empower our children, give our children the information that they need so they can live a long, fruitful life. Listen, this is it for tonight. Listen, Dr. Watson, Sister Makisha, thank you so much for empowering this Amen. community tonight, coming along with me tonight, giving them the seven very powerful nuggets and keys that they need so they can share with their children, so their children can understand how powerful it is for them to be aware of their circle. Listen, listen, do we have wonder, one, one, wonder that's coming? Dr. Watson, did you want to say something? No, 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 I'm good. Listen, okay, I thought so. I thought you were trying to say something. Listen, hey, girl, how you doing? Doing well. What an awesome seminar. Thank you, ladies, for your time, for your commitment, for your passion to inform us, to give us those nuggets so that we can have the abundant life that God has prepared for us and not just for us because he said it wasn't just for us. He said it was also for our children's children down to the fifth generation. So I just thank God for you all on tonight. Each one of you all just pouring out of yourself into these open vessels because I tell you every woman that was connected to you all's voice tonight, their vessels were open and they have received on tonight. Thank you all. Amen. You're welcome. Thank and absolutely, we, we really push that, Dr. Watson. I thank you tonight because we really want to empower. I want to say this really, and, and I want this to be a ringer in our mothers and ears tonight, mm -hmm. even fathers, to let them know that your voice breeds power. Yes, absolutely. Your voice breeds power. Yes. And when you lay down the law with your children, mm -hmm. I don't care how old they are, they need to hear the voice of their mother and their father. It's very important. So and mothers have so much an influence on their children's life. We cannot let go. I don't care how old they are. Our job yeah. is to correct, redirect, and empower. And God give us the wisdom to know when mm -hmm. That's right. and when to pull back. That's right. And That's we right. cannot be afraid, right, Dr. Watson? We That's cannot right. Absolutely. be afraid, you know, and, and I say, pray with your children. Yes. That's that important. is so important. When was that the last time you prayed with your children? Pray right. with your children. They look at you differently. I'm telling you, right. there's a shifting of respect come when you begin yes. to pray. That's right. I prayed with mine today. Absolutely. So, so That's powerful. right. So, so important. 
You you are you are the priest in the home. So you give the business. Listen, Don't Wanda, you. we give it to you. I'm gonna get off this platform. That's yes. it. I have nothing else to say right yes. now. God bless God you. God bless you all. Excited. God bless you, you all. Thank you. Yes. I love you. Mm, I love you too, my love. <laughs> Good night, Wonder Woman. Good night, ladies. Thank you all. Oh, ladies, I tell you, I don't know about you all, but I tell you that my cup is running over on tonight. I tell you, I have ingested all of that. And right now it's digesting and I'm going to allow all of that information and those nuggets to digest so that I'll be able to appropriate them and apply them in my life so that, you know, I will be able to make sure that I know my circle. Okay, ladies, at this time, is this a part of the seminar that each and every one of you can partake in? This is donation time. So I'm asking each and every one of you all tonight, if you have, and if you can, please join with me and Sisters in Power and Sisters as we sow into this organization. Ladies, understand that what you sow into this organization is going into good ground and you shall reap a harvest. On behalf of our leaders and Sisters in Power and Sisters, we thank each and every one of you for your sowing into this organization, your commitment to women everywhere, because that's our commitment. We are committed to serve women everywhere, not just them, but their families also. So I'm asking each and every one of you all on tonight to stand with me with the seed of $25 for our organization on tonight. You can go on to SESINC07.org and you can go there, push the donate button and donate. Thank you ladies for your commitment to coming on tonight. We Thank you all for joining us. And at this time, I'm going to bring on to the platform, back onto the platform, my sister, Makisha. And she's going to give you more information about the organization and the various entities that are in the organization. Thank you, ladies. Hey, Sissy, how you doing? doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well. Thank you for all that information you give us on tonight. I mean, you all just have poured out on tonight into each one of us. And I tell you, we are so grateful for the information that you all have provided unto us in the keys. Thank yes. you. God be the glory. Yes. Jesus. So this phenomenal organization, again, the uh, website is wwwsesinc 7org or, and again, this is a nonprofit organization, so all of your donations are tax uh, deductible. We have a non we have a um a program for the youth, which is boys business and basketball, and we also have girl talk. We get to host different seminars, just teaching the youth uh, different things like human trafficking, ways to be safe, safety while driving. Uh, we also have a scholarship program that we give to our uh, seniors within the program yearly. Uh, to take on to further their, you know, college careers and things like that. Uh, we also have We Realty. If you are into uh, looking into real estate or just fixing your credit, you want to improve your credit, please just feel free to reach out to us so we can help you or and, and direct you to um, different ways to handle that those different things to improve on those things. We have our Women of War hotline, which is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we get to come together in strength and uh, come and share our resources and fill a need, whether that need may be uh, to help someone put groceries uh, on on the in in their fridge or something for the for the month or for the week or for that night whatever that emergency need is we come together pull our resources together um, and we pray for one another and we listen to testim testimonials uh, we know that many people you know by the word we we are healed uh, from the hearing of these testimonials so that's what we get to do come together and draw strength from each other so our women of war hotline is absolutely a uh, phenomenal, phenomenal line. Um, and with that being said, I am going to bring my absolutely amazing sister forward. Sister Corinne, are you there? Hey, good evening. I'm here. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Loving that red Christmas oh, spirit. Right <laughs> now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, well, how does the song say, uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it come with it with the red but i just have to thank you for 
uh, your expertise in sharing on the platform um, this evening with Dr. McNair and Dr. Watson, because, you know, you bring expertise that only you have coming out of um, the uh, workforce that you're in. So thank you yeah. for that. And for always keeping us aware. I mean, tonight was, was awesome, informative meeting. So thank you, sis. To God be the glory, sis. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So I have come to share some COVID tips. So the tip that I want to share with you, um, and, you know, I come on and I give these different things about um, taking my vitamins and so forth and so on. And we sometimes, you know, we get out of the habit of doing the things that we know that we should. So I especially want to say that during this holiday season that they are approaching to be mindful. Um, uh, coming off from Thanksgiving, a lot of there have been uh, a rise in cases of COVID. And though COVID is not what it once was, in many cases, it's a bad cold um, or it sometimes can look like the flu. Sometimes people may think they have the flu, they have COVID or vice versa. But it's during these times, someone once shared with me um, that the two times that they had COVID, one was following Thanksgiving and then the other time was the year later following um, Christmas. So just want to say, you know, when we're gathering with our families, just to be to be mindful um, because someone could be carrying something that doesn't know that they're carrying it. And you just never know. It's not about who did what or who had what, but just be be careful. And if you are experiencing any symptoms, um, you're feeling sometimes you just can feel weird in your body. You can't really explain it, but you're feeling a little off. Go get tested. You know, what you might think is just a cold might be COVID, but what you might think might be a flu might be, be COVID. So just be mindful as we are gathering together um, when you can. You know, sometimes recognize I was gathering with my family over Thanksgiving and there were a lot of us and we were having a great time and none of us had masks except for one person thought to say, oh, it's a lot of us. Let me run and go get my message. That one person was wise enough to say, oh, you know, there's a lot of us. Let me run and go get my mask because I don't need to get sick. So maybe you can be that one person when everyone's gathering and we're all in close proximity to say, oh, let me reel it back a little bit because I might have something and don't know it or someone in my circle uh, might have something. But thank God that if you do have something that, Basically, no one's dying from COVID like they were. So we have to be grateful for that. No one wants to get it. But at least if you do get it, by the grace of God, everyone is living through it. So with that being said, uh, just want to let us go before the Lord, thanking him for this awesome meeting uh, that we had tonight. So informative. Father God, we just, first we want to, lift up the family, uh, the fr the true friends of uh, Shaquilla Williams, those who are mourning her loss. Lord, we know that this meeting and the one prior have come because of the loss of life of this young lady, even the loss of freedom of the lady who took her, the young lady who took her life. So we lift those family members up who have been uh, affected, impacted by this. And we ask that you would comfort them, that you would strengthen them in the days and years ahead, Lord God. Put a hedge of protection around them, Lord God, that they may be able to mourn and to grieve in a healthy way. Because we know that your word says that there's a time and season for everything, a time to live, a time to be born, a time to laugh, a time to cry, a time. There is even a time for us to mourn, but you have called for that time to be uh, healthy and, it, and, and for it not to be long lasting. So we pray that their mourning process will not be a marker in the road that hinders them from continuing to move forward in their individual lives. Now, Lord, we thank you for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that we now have or have been reminded of. The understanding that as our children uh, transition from being kids to being young adults and adults that as mothers that we are still mothers that we still have the influence if we yet take advantage of it and we know how to gear our parenting toward who they are now 
as adults, not who they were as children. We pray, Lord God, that as our relationships, as our children transition, that we are able to shift our parenting from a position of, of the authority that we had as they were children from the position of authority uh, in a different capacity. May the way we deal with our children be in a way based on where they are in their lives. May we not neglect the influence that we have over them. May we not even neglect the choices that we make in our own lives knowing that now that they are watching us, that our children are watching us, that as we are uh, nurturing in, in having healthy communication and relationships with our friends, that they would know what a healthy relationship looks like, that we would not bicker and squabble and fight with our friends and expect our children to have healthy relationships with their friends. We pray, Lord God, that we would lean upon the fruit of the spirit, particularly love, particularly self-control, which helps to, to keep everything together. That as we love ourselves, we will make better uh, decisions in our friendships. As we love those who are around us, Lord God, and as we hone in and self-control, being able to have feelings and to deal with them. Lord, we bind up and we come against rage. We come against anger. We come against uh, unstable, uh, unstable emotions that can not just explode, but can implode within us. We pray, Lord God, that we, you would empower every woman to keep a watchful eye on not only her children, but even on her children's friends, being able to recognize those red flags when our children aren't able to recognize the red flags, but to even uncover and present the red flags to our children to say, hey, did you notice when Johnny did this? Did you notice when Tasha did that? Pay attention to that, that we would even remember the days of old when our parents said, it's something about that young man that I like. There's something about that girl, I'm not quite sure, but that we will be vocal with our children, not allowing social media to be the influence, but that we will stand up and be the influence. Lord, we thank you for teachings like this to remind us of the power and the influence that we have as mothers, to remind us of the responsibility that we have as mothers, that we are to be willing to sacrifice everything, that when we answer yes to the call of motherhood, that we sign over our, our right to turn it up. We turned over our right to act foolishly as though there's no consequences. We pray, Lord God, that you would even deliver every parent on this on this call, on this uh, Zoom, that you would um, remove the, the taste and the desire from for alcohol and drugs or anything that will cause us to have an altered mental status. May we run away from rather than run to things that will cause us to be vulnerable, that will cause us to be vulnerable to the environment in such a way that we don't know what we're doing, that we don't know where we're going, that we don't know what's being done to us. May we always have this, the mindset and teach our children to have the mindset to never allow themselves to get into situations where they are not in control of themselves, that someone else has to tell them what they did or what they said because they were out of their, their normal uh, behavior. We thank you because we learned so much on this evening. May we take it with us and share it with our children and share it with those who are connected to us that we all may be able to grow together to be the women, to be the mothers that you have called us to, that, our, that we may be um, in line with your word that tells us that if we raise our children up and the way they should go, that when they are older, that they would not depart from it. Lord, we ask that you would just be with the panelists tonight, continue to strengthen them, continue to grace them, continue to keep their, their heavenly antennas open, able to receive from you that they will may be able to impart 
to us what it is you have imparted unto them. In Jesus' name, we honor you, we thank you, and we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. We'll meet you again here in two weeks. Love you. Good night.